Hi, welcome to the National Builders Choice Online News uh, Disclaimer Review. I'm Robin Steinberg and welcome to my show again. Today we have a, a very interesting guest with me and that is none other than Mr. Watson Tan uh, who is the owner of Artfront Gallery here in Singapore. And they just started this business uh, not too long ago and we're going to feature about what is going to happen here in the Singapore scene on art. Uh, Mr. Uh, Watson, welcome to my show. Uh, tell us though, uh, what actually drives you to open up, you know, a art gallery here in Singapore? Well, I wanted to promote um, the art scene, uh, a new vibrant more, uh, a new vibrant art scene in Singapore, um, to actually bring in, uh, to educate, and also to teach the young children uh, about art. Uh, being a financial capital or a fi financial country. Uh, I think the only thing that's missing is art and of course uh, fashion has already been booming so uh, art has something it's a bit lacking in Singapore so me to open this gallery was actually uh, firstly on my my uh, interests to collect and also to venture into something that uh, which I could educate as well now, it's amazing that you have uh, located your, your art gallery here in the university. I mean, uh, you know, it's quite a novel idea. Uh, how, how, where, do, where do you get inspiration from? Well, um, I was looking at what the, the whole situation of Singapore having to be trying to promote um, art aggressively. Um, and uh, I was looking at what the government was doing, uh, pumping in lots of, lot of money and uh, investing a lot on art. But um, I look at uh, bringing, you know, uh, kids these days are more modernized. They don't go to the museums or they don't enjoy, uh, 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 you know, they prefer to be on their computers or to be playing games on the laptop. Um, and I look at it that it's quite sad because the, there's this beauty in art where you, you, you know, that was lost. So instead of forcing children or to tell children, why don't you go to the museums or to the galleries, uh, you know, it's better to put it in a university where they have no choice, but or rather they, you know, it's nearer to them. They have to be here five days a week, six days a week. And what, what's a better way to, you know, uh, to, to enjoy a space and to relax in a space and uh, bring up to them instead? Now, folks, uh, for, for those who do not know, their website that you can find them is at www.artfront.com.sg for more information. And by the way, why do you call your gallery Artfront? I, have, I own a modeling agency for 16 years called Upfront, which is U-P-F-R-O-N-T, and um, it's been doing very, very well. Uh, so I thought it would be quite cute to call it Upfront uh, under a whole umbrella, kind of, uh, uh, you know, under my own signature. Okay. Now, moving forward, mm -hmm. what are your plans uh, in the coming year? Uh, do you intend to bring in uh, a more collections uh, for exposure? From overseas? Yes, uh, I've already. Um, I'm planning to actually bring east to west and west to east. And uh, I think what uh, what I'm trying to also do is to develop new artists and to promote new artists in the region and also internationally uh, to collaborate uh, with uh, good artists that's not been exposed fully. Now, what is your criteria in choosing uh, the kind of art pieces to be featured in your gallery? I guess uh, for me, I, I, I always base it on what I feel um, from, from the, the art pieces where I look at it and I say something affects me and hopefully that will affect what the clients or the person that sees it. Wow. Now, what is your philosophy of art? What is art to you? Well, art to me, when I first started collecting art a few years back, uh, it brought me into this, uh, into this new world, which I, I never had thought I could discover. Uh, being in um, the business, into a very fast and you know, uh, crazy business like fashion, uh, it's a, which gives me a lot of stress, art brought me to another world and another dimension where I could look at it and everything was forgotten. 
you know, like a bit a, a peace of mind in a certain way. Now you so you spoke about peace mm -hmm. uh, itself. Now tell us, uh, could you elaborate? Uh, you know, uh, does this peace that you spoke of also brings you to a spiritual realm in art? Is there any spiritual relationship? Yes, there's a lot of spiritual relationship um, when I look at art and uh, I feel it and um, a lot of passion as well. And it, it, it brings me you know, to a different dimension altogether. Now, you spoke about the dimension right now. So tell us, uh, what advice would you give uh, for young art collectors? You know, because you, are, you have been collecting art for many years now. Yes. You know, and what drives you on, on, on the first instinct when you, when you first thought that, well, I should start collecting art? I think uh, you really need to like the piece. It has to, you really need to feel for it. Um, you know, your collection will always keep on changing somehow. Your, your interests will keep on changing as you grow older and, you know, your style and your, what you used to like, say, five years ago, it, you know, it keeps on changing. So be patient with what you buy, uh, but make sure you like the piece in the first place. You know, some people use it as an investment, but I think it's more than an investment. It could be a century of your own. Now, for those who are living in, you know, in pigeonholes, or I would not call it pigeonholes, yeah. but in apartments, you know, um, how are they going to store their art pieces if they have, uh, if they have space as a constraint? Um, I don't repeat that since it distracted. Oh, okay. Sorry. Yeah. Oh, sense of that. Okay. Off my screen. Yeah. Now, now, for those who are living in apartments, uh, how, how do they resolve a space constraint in terms of collecting art? Do they need to find a warehouse that has a temperature control uh, system? Okay. Um, firstly, if you're going to buy art, of course, you have to see the amount of space that you have um, to place it as uh, something for you to look at. Um, but when you start collecting, it becomes, you know, it becomes quite addictive. So you, you, for me, it, you know, I, I would, you would need to store it after buying more and more. So I would suggest, yes, you need a temperature controlled warehouse if you tend to have maybe much, you know, quite a, quite a lot of pieces, and you need to understand that um, uh, depends on the environment that you're in. In Singapore, you need a temperature controlled uh, environment. Now, how does uh, collectors, when they buy a lot of these art pieces, mm -hmm. and at the end of the day, they ask themselves, "Well, I, I have too much art. Uh, you know, I need to sell some of them off. Mm -hmm. uh, how do I go about you know, uh, valuating them and sell them off in, in the right uh, environment?" Um, you can actually go into uh, auction house um, and evaluate your pieces. Uh, they will give you advice. You can also come to us, um, to the gallery, uh, to also ask for advice and, you know, uh, and whether or not we could sell it. Um, it really depends on the artist and it really depends on the quality of work. Now, for aspiring uh, you know, a businessman who wants to start a business, you know, in, uh, like opening an art gallery, what advice would you give to them uh, since you have been through this experience? Uh, for me, it's more on passion. Um, it's not an. It's, if you talk about a business, it's not. Uh, it's not a, an easy business to do. But uh, because I love it so much, and because it's passion, um, I would. You know, I, I would take it more like a interest rather than a business. Okay, so, so in other words, for those who start this business uh, it, as a art gallery, they have to consider. Uh, is it sustainable or not? Yes, yes, and you need space. You need good <laughs> space, and for a country like Singapore, I think um, it's very hard to find good space. You know. Now, the future of art, where, where do you see uh, it going? Do you see uh, art here in Singapore and Southeast Asia, they're going to have more of its e East and West uh, meeting together as a collaboration? Well, I look at the... Um, I look at it, it will happen, um, but I think uh, um, different galleries and different uh, mindsets, uh, you know, uh, uh, there will be a collaboration and it will be uh, uh, like a change, uh, you know, like 
For instance, if you were to, uh, some people like the English words and some people don't like the English words. You know, so it's it really, it really depends. Actually, I I can't answer that. But we are, since we are living in a globalized world right yeah. now, and where you know social networks and internet, you know, you know it's become a very powerful tool mm -hmm. to publicize uh, a lot of artworks from artists and mm -hmm. galleries around the world. Well, what do you see uh, this going? Do you see that social networks is going to take off uh, in promoting the art galleries and the artists themselves? I think uh, with um with the way it's going now, uh, you know, the um, collecting art is a little bit like a trend. Um, it's a little bit like, uh, and the, because of internet, because of um, you know the uh, the way uh, it's easier to to look at pictures. But um, yeah, I think it will move uh, where it's easier to to bring in, you know, to to promote um, the West. Or the east, you know, uh, to the west. So I think that we, that will move quite fast. Now, uh, in your observation mm -hmm. right now, for the, in terms of uh, art trends, do you foresee that artists right now around the world, including those from Asia and China, are they are they right now uh, creating art pieces that is a fusion uh, base, like like the, the like the Chinese? They they they, they infuse their, their influence with Western uh, philosophies and so on. Do you see that? Oh I yes, mean? of course. Even um, yeah, the Chinese, um, the Indonesians, I think there's a lot of influence on the West. And of course, the West has a lot of influence to the East, you know, from the East. So I think there's a much culture um, that, that will happen in the future. Um, I, I, I look at, uh, and, but I really hope that it doesn't, you know, I, kept, I keep telling artists not to to go too far on their identity, especially where they're from. I think the beauty about being an Indonesian, a Singaporean, or a China artist, there must be an identity to your, what you're drawing. It kind of must relate to where you're from. Then I think there's a lot of, it's more personal to the artist, rather than following something which, is, which doesn't have an identity. Amazing, and so that's where Artfront Gallery represents. Yes, the identity. Yes, the identity of um, of the artist and from from where the artist is from. Well, thank you, Mr. Watson, you know, for sharing with us here at the National Critics' Choice uh, this time review. And folks, uh, for more information and uh, and programs uh, that's going to be organized by Artfront Gallery, you can look up at their website www artfront.com.sg and if not you can also uh, leave a message or you can call your office uh, the country code is 65 6 and once again I'm Robin Steinberg thank you for joining me uh, with Mr. Watson Tan the director and owner for Artfront Gallery